Entrance open. Voice authorization required. This is Robin. Robin, partner to the Batman. Voice authorization accepted. Please enter. Training with the Dark Knight is hard work. Batman used to work alone, and as Robin, I have to know all about Batman's past adventures. Part of the job involves coming down into the Bat Cave and using the powerful Bat Computer to learn all about Batman's arch enemies. Today, I'm investigating one of Batman's creepiest villains, the terrible Two Face. <laughs> The strangest part about Two-Face is that at first, he and Batman were friends. When billionaire Bruce Wayne first donned the mask of the Batman, he was good at catching criminals. <laughs> yes! Go in! Eat! Lead. Ooh! What was that? That was a Batarang. <gasps> Batman! But the police had trouble keeping the bad guys in jail. Sorry, Batman, but we'll have to let him go. He's guilty, Commissioner Gordon. He's the gunman. But there aren't any other eyewitnesses. Unless you want to testify in court. You know a man in a bat suit can't testify in court, Commissioner. Well, then, like I said, I have to let him go. I'm sorry, Batman. But Batman isn't just muscle in martial arts. He's got the brains and skills to back them up. And once he put his mind to it, he came up with a plan to make sure the criminals stayed behind bars. He asked Commissioner Gordon to contact District Attorney Harvey Dent, the lawyer who put the criminals in jail, and he arranged to meet them on the roof of City Hall. Good to see you again, Harvey. Sorry I'm late, Commissioner. So, where is he? Give him a minute, Harvey. He only comes out at night, you know. What are you doing? Oh, this. Flipping this trick silver dollar. It has heads on both sides and no tails. So, I always win the coin toss, get it? Nervous habit. Been doing it since I was a kid. Thought I gave it up, but tonight, I guess I'm nervous. That's not every night a guy gets to meet. Hello, Commissioner. Batman. Uh, Batman, this is Harvey Dent, the district attorney. Hello, Mr. Dent. Um, hello. Batman knew it wasn't enough just to catch criminals. He needed to make sure they were proven guilty. The Dark Knight explained his problem to the district attorney. Nothing can stop me from nailing these criminals, Mr. Dent. But I want them nailed permanently. To do that, I need the law. You and I are two sides of the same coin, Batman. We both want to put Gotham's criminals behind bars. But to do that, I need evidence. That's why I wanted to meet you. I have a plan. Whenever I get close to a collar, I'll call you and tell you what I've got. If you say it's enough, I take down the criminals. Then it's your job to make sure they stay down. I like your plan, Batman. Here's my number. Call me any time, morning or... Hey, he's gone! Batman vanished into the night, but in the weeks to come, Harvey Dent saw him again and again. Week after week, Batman, the world's greatest detective, came to him with evidence. It's enough. Go get them. In the first month, Batman cracked 20 cases. The DA made 87 arrests, a car theft ring, a downtown extortion racket, and then the biggest criminal of all, the leader of Gotham City's underworld, a psycho mob kingpin called... Boss Moroni, you're through. It's the Batman. Get him, boys. Boss Moroni's bodyguards were tough, but they were no match for the Dark Knight. Batman's an expert at every martial art in the world. He punched out two thugs before they knew what hit them. A spinning back kick took care of a third. But as the last of his bodyguards hit the floor, Boss Moroni pulled out a submachine gun from its hiding place. I got you in my sights, Cape Crusader. But Batman was ready for that too. And I've got you in mind. Without his gun and his goons, Moroni wasn't nearly so tough. Batman had him ready and waiting when Harvey Dent arrived with the police. All right, Batman, you got me. But I won't be had for long. If you thought my goons were tough, where do you get a load of my lawyers? <laughs> Take him away, boys. Boss Moroni can laugh all he wants, Harvey. But I'm counting on you to make the conviction stick. I'll do my best, Batman. But a criminal like that... 
It's a waste of time. He doesn't deserve a trial. He doesn't even deserve to live. But that's not the way Batman worked. Batman had sworn never to kill anyone. Maybe he operated outside the law sometimes, but there were rules even he followed. And as the day of Boss Moroni's trial neared, Dent started to feel the pressure. Harvey, did you see the newspapers? The judge in the Boss Moroni case just threw out a key piece of evidence. Curse that stupid judge! You can still make the conviction stick, Harvey. I'm not sure, Batman. I need more evidence. If you could just plant these phony documents in Moroni's penthouse apartment... We've talked about this before, Harvey. That's not how I work. So make this your work. Moroni's the worst criminal this town's ever seen. There are two sides to every coin, Batman. All you have to do is... No. Harvey Dent started to crack under the strain. One night after Batman had once again refused to frame Moroni, Dent sat alone in his office. Batman. Batman. Who does he think he is? I know what's right and what's wrong. I'll show him. Harvey Dent started to split right down the middle, half of him wanting to be good. No. Oh, no, I'm the district attorney. I can't do anything illegal. The other half wanting to take matters into his own hands. Yes, I could do it. Why bring Boss Moroni to trial? I could just kill him myself. Dent had reached the breaking point. Frightened by the dark side of his personality, Harvey dived into his legal work. He examined every piece of evidence twice, visited every crime scene two times, anything to get away from the evil voice whispering in his head. Batman. Batman. And it paid off. By the day of the trial, Harvey Dent was ready. Boss Moroni's trial was the biggest Gotham City had ever seen. The courtroom was packed. Harvey Dent worked hard to prove that Boss Moroni was the leader of the huge crime syndicate that had terrorized Gotham. And thanks to Batman's evidence, it looked like the crime boss was headed for a life sentence. Even Boss Moroni knew it, and he'd already plotted his revenge against Harvey Dent. On the last day of the trial, Moroni pulled his final trick. Okay, okay, Mr. District Attorney, you got me dead to rights. I'm guilty, but before I go to prison, I got one more thing to show you. What's that? A bottle? Yeah, have a little sulfuric acid. <laughs> ah! Ah! My face! Ah! My face! Quick as a snake, Boss Moroni had splashed Dent's face with acid. Harvey turned away, but it was too late. Drawing their guns, the police tried to stop Boss Moroni, but the mob kingpin decided to go out fighting. You want some of this acid? Come and get it, you bunch of flatfoots! <laughs> ah! So Boss Moroni's crime syndicate was finished, but not before District Attorney Harvey Dent paid the price. Although he tried to dodge in time, the acid splashed all over the left half of Dent's face. The right side was perfect but the left side became twisted, and the skin peeled away. His swollen eyeball bulged from its socket. The plastic surgeons tried to repair him, but nothing could hide the horribly deep scars. Not even Commissioner Gordon could cheer him up. Harvey, the doctors say you'll be out of bed soon. Great, so everyone can make fun of the new me. They'll say, look, there goes the two-faced man. Here, I brought you this, it's your lucky coin. I'm afraid it got a little damaged in the, uh, accident. Damaged? Yeah, like me. Scarred on one side, clean on the other. Yeah, thanks, Commissioner. Sure, Harvey. I'll see you. You're gonna be fine. No, I'm not. Before Boss Moroni's attack, Harvey Dent had felt himself divided between his good half and his bad half. Now, looking at his face in the mirror, Harvey Dent became obsessed with twos. He looked at the two sides of his face. He stared at the two sides of his lucky coin. Two faces in the mirror, two faces on the coin. <laughs> two face, two faces. <laughs> and Dent only blamed one person. Two faces, and it's all Batman's fault. They say everybody's got two sides to them, a good side and a bad side. Even Batman's got two sides. He's Bruce Wayne, billionaire playboy, and he's Batman, the Dark Knight of Gotham City. 
Batman uses his dark side for justice. But when Harvey Dent realized he had a dark side too, it drove him insane. He started making all his decisions by the flip of that crazy coin. If the coin landed with the clean side up, Harvey did the right thing. If it landed with the scarred side up, he went on a rampage. On his last day in the hospital, Commissioner Gordon visited Harvey Dent in the hospital garden. Hello, Harvey. Feeling good today? Yes. Yes. We think we are. Good. The doctors say you'll be going home soon. Say, Harvey, you're shivering. Do you want to go inside? No. We stay outside. Oh, Harvey. Harvey, come back. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Gordon was more surprised than hurt by the blow. He chased after Harvey, but the district attorney slipped over a wall and out of sight. That day, Harvey Dent escaped from the hospital and vanished into the shadows of Gotham City. But he wasn't Harvey Dent anymore. Just like his face was divided into good and bad, his personality was split in two. We are no longer Harvey Dent, we are Two-Face! One half was good. We should turn ourselves in. Go home, see the wife, apologize to Batman. But the other was evil. No, no, burn the house, forget the wife, and most of all, destroy Batman! Hearing that Harvey Dent had gone mad, Batman combed the city for signs of his former ally. But the former district attorney was in the last place Batman thought to look. He had joined the criminals of Gotham's underworld. After years as the district attorney, Harvey Dent knew just where to find the leaders of every gang in Gotham. He went down to the darkest, deadliest streets to meet with the most devious criminals, but this time he didn't arrest them. At an empty warehouse he turned into his secret hideout, Dent assembled all the criminal masterminds in Gotham City. Hiding his scarred face in the shadows, Two-Face said, Once we were Harvey Dent. Now we are Two-Face, and from now on, we are running this show. And what if we don't like it? What if some of us don't want to join? Why then, we'll let a flip of the coin decide. Two-Face flipped the coin. Then he smiled so brightly that the handsome side of his face beamed. Ah, the clear side is up. You may go. Thanks. I'm out of here. Me too, Two-Face. I want out. Hmm, let's ask the coin. As he caught the coin, Two-Face frowned, revealing the scarred, misshapen side of his face. The scarred side is up. Too bad for you. <laughs> Anyone else? Well then, let's get started. Two-Face and his gang began a crime spree that terrorized Gotham City. They robbed banks and jewelry stores. They hijacked armored cars and stole precious paintings from museums. And they always stayed one step ahead of the law. Rumors spread quickly that the underworld had been organized by a new criminal mastermind. Unaware that his old ally had turned to crime, Batman studied the evidence to determine who was behind this new reign of terror. It's not the Joker. It's not the Scarecrow. Who could it be? Just then, the bat signal appeared over the city, filling the sky with the symbol of Gotham's Dark Knight. Firing up the Batmobile, Batman raced toward the city as Commissioner Gordon informed him by radio that burglar alarms had sounded at Gotham's Twin Towers, home of its two largest banks. This looks serious, Batman. My men are en route. I'm closer. This is our crime boss, Commissioner. I can feel it. Batman out. <laughs> Arriving ahead of the police, Batman scanned the two skyscrapers that towered over the city. At the top of each building, a helicopter waited with its rotors spinning. Silent as a shadow, the dark night crept up on the criminals as they loaded bags of money into one of the choppers. What? This is a stroke of genius, boss. No one ever thought of robbing two banks at once. Yes, it's as rare as a two-dollar bill, but much more profitable. Time to close this account. Batman leaped out of the shadows to confront the burglars, but he stopped in surprise. There, standing before him, was Harvey Dent. Harvey? Hello, Batman. We missed you. We won't miss you again. 
Taken by surprise, Batman barely avoided the bullets aimed at his heart. But as he twisted away, one of the bullets struck his left shoulder. Spun off balance, Batman toppled off the edge of the skyscraper. At the last minute, the Dark Knight grabbed hold of the ledge with his one good hand. He hung there desperately as Two-Face glared down at him. Tisk, tisk, Batman. You must observe our theme. Hold onto the ledge with only two fingers. We think we'll remove this one. Oh. This one. Oh. And this one. Oh. Wounded as he was, Batman was unable to defend himself, and soon he was hanging by only two fingers. Harvey, we were allies. We are not Harvey, we are Two-Face. And we'll let the coin decide your fate. And the coin says... Drat! The coin says you'll live. I'll catch you in the second act, Batman. Two-Face turned away, leaving Batman clinging to the roof. As Dent made his escape in his helicopter, the Dark Knight struggled to pull himself up. But his left arm was useless, and he was weak from loss of blood. Another minute and he would plummet to his death. Got to hold on. Just as Batman felt himself slip, a hand reached down and grabbed his wrist. Hold on, Batman! I've got you! As Commissioner Gordon pulled Batman to safety, the Dark Knight told him the news. The new crime boss is Harvey Dent. Only he calls himself Two-Face now, and I've got a plan to catch him. How? Today is Tuesday. So? And it's the second Tuesday of the month. Well, yes, but... And there's a rare collection of original books, including Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, on display at the Gotham Public Library. Well, Batman, I see why Two-Face would strike on the second Tuesday of the month, but why some old books at the library? There's no time to explain. Trust me. That's where Two-Face will strike next, Commissioner and I'm going to be there to stop him. Meanwhile, at the Gotham Public Library, Two-Face and his gang had already made their move. I don't get it, Two-Face. Why are we stealing books? Because we want them, you idiot. Because they're worth millions. Cutting the alarm wires, Two-Face slipped inside the darkened library and made his way to the special display that held the precious books. But just as Two-Face smashed the glass case and began stuffing the books into a bag, a dark shadow fell across both sides of his face. The shadow of a bat. Batman, how did you know we'd be here? It was simple. The books in that collection include Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Two books written by Mark Twain. Twain, another word for two. I knew your obsession with twos would lead you here. Now, I'm taking you in, Harvey. We aren't Harvey Dent anymore. We're Two-Face now. And we've got two dozen men to take care of you. Destroy the bat. At Two-Face's command, his gang of thugs attacked. One of them pulled out a wicked-looking machine gun and opened fire. Batman dodged away as the bullets whizzed past him. Still aching from his earlier wound, Batman could not avoid every bullet. And one round struck him in the leg. I hate guns. Pulling a batarang from his utility belt, the Dark Knight threw it with all his might. The whistling batarang zipped past the gunman's head. Hey, he missed me! <laughs> but the batarang changed direction in midair and came whirling back, hitting the thug in the back of the head. Oh! Now that the machine gun was out of the way, Batman turned to the rest of Two-Face's gang. Hmm, 20 of them and one of me. The odds are almost even. Ignoring the pain of his wounds, the Dark Knight fell on Two-Face's gang with a vengeance. Get him! No, you get him! As Two-Face watched, Batman took out his entire gang single-handedly. No, no! This isn't how we planned it! What should we do? Stay and fight or run away? We must ask our coin. The clear side is up. Harvey, wait! We run! Two-Face escaped out a side door as Batman polished off the last of the hired muscle. Batman raced after him, but slowed by his injured leg, he couldn't close the distance. Too bad you can't fly, Batman! Just as he was about to get away, Two-Face reached a split in the road. Which way should we go? Left or right? We'll ask the coin. Never catch him like this. My only chance. I'll only get one shot. Hurling his batarang, Batman struck the silver dollar in midair, sending it spinning down a drainpipe. No, 
No! Our coin! We can't decide what to do without our coin! Without his coin, Two-Face could not decide which way to go. He was stuck, trapped by his own obsession with the number two. Batman called Commissioner Gordon, and the police soon came to take Two-Face away. Which way? Left or right? I just can't decide. Left or right? Which way? Left or well, right? I guess that's the end of Two-Face. It's a right. shame, Commissioner. Right. Harvey Dent left was a good right. man. We'll take him to Arkham Asylum. The doctors there will try to rehabilitate him. It looks like they've got their work cut out for them. All right, Harvey. In you go. Very well. But we won't be here for long. We'll be leaving soon. You see? We have to kill Batman! Whatever you say, Harvey. But you won't see Batman again. Unless he comes to visit you at your new address. Arkham Asylum. Uh, room number two. Number two? Room number two? <laughs>